Do we love or hate Roger for Brianna? Who's the show's most impressive villain? And which Jamie Claire love scene left fans and Diana baffled? Hi, I'm Janet. Has Droughtlander reduced you to put a shell of yourself? Say no more. Let's revive your weary soul. 1. Jamie's Hairylicious Moments You've heard me right. We're talking about the evolution of Jamie's trademark ginger mane. It should probably make us feel better, knowing that not even the king of men is immune to bad hair days, right? So first, because we're in love with Jamf and love is blind, here are some of the highlights, pun intended. The first ever episode. Would you just look at that perfect, deep, rich auburn color? And the cut, not too long, not too short, just wavy perfection. Those were still in the days that Sam had to have his own tresses dyed, which obviously wasn't sustainable. Cue the wigs in later seasons. Oh, and this look from the first season. Also, remember round two of the wedding night? Who can forget? Then this. Now this is a Fraser fringe we approve of. Can we imagine Claire running her hands through this? Right, you get the idea. Jamie's hair started out just fine. But then, you know, there were a few lowlights too. It's not just his fans, but Sam himself, who've been lamenting some of Jamie's wigs. And when it was bad, well, let's just say it left us with many questions like, good heavens, why won't that blasted fringe grow? Did they have curling irons in the 18th century? And is he secretly a Scottish hobbit? Luckily, the hair department must have gotten wind of it all, because in season five, Jamie's hair was restored to looking fine and dandy. Now, just before we move on to why Roger is one of the least beloved characters, we think old Murtaugh's wig in season four deserves a nod, don't you? If no one has told Duncan LaCroix yet, the silver fox look suits him. Two, why Roger Wakefield sucks. We're all aware of the subgroup of fans who's got nothing nice to say about Brianna Fraser, but we actually have our target on a different character. In fact, as far as we can tell, Brianna is pulling the shortest stick next to her dearest Roger. It almost seems as if her character is merely a plot device for Roger's dramas. But wait, I'm digressing. Maybe Jamie sensed all along that his Brie deserved better. Just saying. But here's what's counting against Roger. For one, he's kind of selfish, and he's got some scary misogynistic views about the birds and bees and marriage. Let us not forget how long before they got married, the guy criticized Brie for wanting to be intimate before the wedding. From which century is this one? And was it not true that he himself had had premarital affairs before her? Talk about double standards. On top of that, fans and we think his behavior after their hand fasting ceremony was childish and that's being kind. We resent him for leaving after their tiff, which only took place because one, Brie found out he'd neglected to tell her about Jamie and Claire's obituaries, and two, he implied she should start obeying him now that he was her husband. So frankly, it's no wonder she asked him to leave. But man, he should have stayed because you know why. That is not all. No. Keeping in mind that Roger was telling everyone how much he loved her, it's really tough to forgive him for considering leaving her after Claire pointed out the baby maybe bonnets. Poor heartbroken Brie. I mean, if Jamie were to be in the same situation, we can bet on it, he would never have abandoned Claire. Not even for a minute. But let's see if Mr. Wakefield Mackenzie has done anything to redeem himself. Hmm, you can't see me now, but I'm scratching my head. Okay, we did sympathize with him when Jamie mistakenly beat him and sold him to the Mohawk. Now that was rough. Also, when he learned of Brianna's assault, he teared up and we kind of felt sorry for the man. And it was probably too harsh of Jamie to say that it was all his fault for leaving her alone. Oh, and you would have to be heartless not to have felt some form of empathy for the poor guy when he was hung by Governor Tyron. Months after surviving that incident, it was difficult to watch him struggle with PTSD and consider ending his life. Still, we wouldn't say we love his character. But what do you think? Do you love him, hate him, or are you simply meh? Let us know. Three, villains we love to hate. Now, this is going to be a tough one. Which outlandish villain do we despise the most? And remember, in this context, the more you despise them, the better the villain. There are three main contenders. It's Black Jack Randall, Galus Duncan, and Stephen Bonnet. 
The original villain, Randall, is without a doubt a monster. He can be best described as sadistic, ruthless, and cold-hearted. Did you also initially struggle to shake the feeling of terror each time you saw poor innocent Frank with Randall's face in the first season? Surely, the dungeon scene, where we had to suffer through the graphic details of his gruesome assault on Jamie, was the worst ever. And by the worst, we mean kudos to both actors, but maybe less would have been more. But anyways, would you have liked to see a different ending for Randall? Now, it can't be denied, Galus Duncan was also a scary villain, once we got to learn that's what she really was. Although something about her always did seem a bit off, didn't it? Even after we learned her true identity, we never guessed she'd be the main antagonist several seasons later. What she did to poor young Ian was upsetting, and it wasn't easy watching him struggle with the trauma years afterwards. Ah, but we think we might have a tie between Jack Randall and, wait for it, the infamous Stephen Bonnet. We despised this trickster's ways since we first laid eyes on him. Add to his villain list Bree's assault, robbing Jamie and Claire in that traumatizing boat incident, and the final straw, wanting to sell Brianna. Did he deserve Bree's mercy at the end? We're waiting for your thoughts, so share away. 4. Favorite love scenes. And then one. There's no build up here. We loved all of Jamie and Claire's love scenes. Well, actually, apart from one, which Diana Gabaldon herself has criticized, but she'll have to keep watching. It feels like stating the obvious to say that Claire and Jamie's first fireplace moment is etched into our thirsty minds forever. And then, the wedding night. Another notable favorite that we loved was the turtle soup scene. Not to forget this one, too. You know, it might be a bit PG to delve into the rest here, so let's leave it at that. Next on our agenda is one brief lovemaking sequence in Season 5's 6th episode that bothered some fans, and apparently the author, too. This moment is none other than Jamie and Claire's literal roll in the hay in the stables at River Run. You know, after Jamie risked Claire's wedding rings in a game against Mr. Wiley and Claire was still upset, they do say makeup lovemaking is the best. But was it in this instance? In response to the episode, one fan tweeted, The stable scene was such a disappointment. What has happened to their chemistry? Everything looks so forced and unnatural. The only compliment another fan could muster was this one. The horse was pretty. At least they're finding the silver lining, right? In any case, author Diana agreed with the first fan. Her follow-up tweet read, Bad dialogue, bad direction, bad lighting, awkward set. The actors did their best with what they were given to work with. Gabaldon later clarified she wasn't upset with the actors, nor the episode as a whole, explaining that she was talking about that one 45-second scene only. Glad to know. 5. Episode Favorites versus not so favorites. We could spend all day talking about this, but you know we can't. So we've settled for one each, best versus worst. First on our love list is Faith. Why? It's most definitely not because it was a happy scene to watch, but rather because both Sam and Katrina's performances were award worthy. It's no secret that the episode broke our hearts when their daughter, Faith, is stillborn. Let us also not forget that Jamie was in jail during this trauma, so Claire had to cope all on her own. The raw emotion portrayed by both actors was almost palpable. It's enough to give you goosebumps all over again. So yes, that's why we've chosen this episode as one of many others that we love the most. Moving on to useful occupations and deceptions, which to be dead honest, felt like a lot of nothing. Sure, the costumes and surroundings were exquisite, and it was lovely to meet Fergus, but apart from that, it was a bit dull and seemingly pointless. Let's explain. This is pretty much everything that transpired. 1. Claire was treating the ill at a local hospital. 2. Jamie was still trying to derail the Jacobite Rebellion with help of Fergus's pickpocketing skills. Mm, all in all, that about covers it. On that note, can we also just be naughty and squeeze in that we did not love the fact that Jamie married Leary after she tried to kill Claire? Never liked her, never will. 6. Storyline Envy You know, we're so Outlander obsessed that it's hard to find fault, so we'll just kick it off and say that we love how this show is based on the books and manages to keep in so many awesome details, some of them even word for word. Unlike other popular shows that play with combining fiction and reality, it actually has a storyline, which is quite refreshing, right? 
That said, some of our favorite storylines include Jamie and Lord John's friendship. And Claire and Jamie plotting in Paris in season two was also great because it allowed us a glimpse into the power politics that took place around that time. Right, if we are only allowed to pick one more, then it must be the wedding storyline, where to protect Claire from British hands, she had to be married off to Mr. James Alexander Malcolm Mackenzie Fraser. What a tough job. Someone had to do it though. Since we have to, our less favorite storylines, in no particular order, were when Jack Black and the naive Mary had to marry. Is this not any young girl's worst nightmare? Well, hopefully she wasn't in his taste, if you know what we mean. And we'll say it again, Jamie and Leary's wedding. Just no. Other than that, we simply wish the show could have included a few of our favorite scenes from the books. We know, we know, no time and all that. Most notably, the snake in the outhouse scene, or Roger trying to navigate through rhododendron hell, just to name a few. We think adding some of these hilarious scenes from the book into the show would have brought some comic relief. Remember the earlier seasons where we had Jokers, Angus, and Rupert? Oh, how we miss their banner. And Prince Louis the 15th and Louise? Even though they didn't feature majorly in the books, they were added in to break up the serious stuff with some lighthearted laughs. It just feels like seasons four and five were really dark. Righto, folks, that's it for the day. Do let us know if you'd like to add anything to our list. Did you agree or disagree with any of it? Let's talk. Thanks for watching. If you also love Outlander as much as we do, then subscribe and stay awesome.